obviously huge gulf between the achievement in 2011 with Cal winning the Worlds and this year with no one finishing. Yeah. Uh, how do you feel about the kind of future of um, GB riders in the Worlds? And particularly, we have um, hilly courses that are perhaps more difficult to control. Mm. Well, I think, you know, just that, that, that question between the two Worlds, you know, from 2011 to now, 2013, you know, the, to me, um, looking back at it, um, it's like two different disciplines really. Um, it's like having a BMX race and a mountain bike race, they are so far apart. So a flat world's on the road to a hilly world on the road is that different really. Um, and I think, um, you know, just prove that we, we've got a long way to go to win the worlds on a hilly course. I think we have the riders. I think, you know, people like Chris or Bradley, Pete Kenner in particular, I think, can win a Hilly World Championships. Um, I think Pete is is possibly one of the best I've seen from an under-23 rider at, at one-day racing. So yeah, we've definitely got the ability. It's, it's piecing it all together. And I think, um, you know, our goal, we, 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 the Worlds 2011, we then wanted to win the Tour de France. You know, um, I think now we're moving towards winning a Hilly World Championships, but it's going to take time, as we saw in, in Florence. At a, at a best guess, when do you mm. think we could next win it? Well, I think, you know, I think any year we can win it. I think Chris was in good shape this year, but it just didn't come together well. Um, so I think next year we could win it. I, I do think 2015's course will suit somebody like Pete Kenner. Now, whether Pete's at that level at that time, I, I'm not 100% sure, but he's certainly pushing for that. Um, the, the course, I think, is going to be similar to what we saw in Valkenburg. So I think a, a rider like Pete, who can cope with short, punchy climbs and finish quite fast, will, will be ideal, I think. So, yeah, I think before the next Olympics, we'll be have another world champion. Having obviously won the world, won three points jerseys, all three Grand Tours, mm. um, how much more does Cav have to give? Can he win the Worlds? Can he become the highest ever, um, the cyclist with the highest ever number of stage wins in Tour de France, which I know is something that's been talked about? Yeah, I, I think, you know, Cav's, Cav's got some big dreams and, and you know, he's, he has sort of achieved many of them dreams. And um, I think the, the maximum number of wins in the Tour is, is a relatively new one. He definitely didn't set out to win that or to achieve that when he started as a pro bike rider. Um, but he certainly, um, you know, that's become a new goal really in a way. And he could definitely do that. Um, I think one of his big under achievements last year and while he was on Team Sky was that he didn't win Milan San Remo in the World Championship jersey. Now, that's, that's something that he wants to try and win again. And I think he has as an idea post-2016. 2016, the world is in Qatar. And at the moment, we think it's flat. Who knows what they will do? Whether they'll sling a big climb in. But I think now Milan San Remo has changed, and I think we'll see next year they've thrown in a new climb in. So it may make it quite unachievable for him in the future. But we'll have to see. But I certainly think, you know, um, he, I think he still needs to win the green jersey again in the, in the tour, because he's only won it the once, and I think he needs to do it again. So that's, you know, yellow jersey. To wear it, at least for one day, is a big... Big goal, I think, yeah. Are there other riders, particularly perhaps the Yates brothers, who you're particularly excited about um, coming up through through younger ranks? Yeah, I think the Yates brothers are, you know, have, have the shown this year. They've got a great opportunity. Um, I think Pete is for sure a very key character of ours now. But uh, you know, Josh Edmondson, I think, is a great character, a great sort of. Um, Ability, you know, in in the climbs as well. But then there's all, the, you know, there's the other guys like Alex Dowsett, who I think, you know, has won a, a Grand Tour stage this year, and I think he's got more to come. Ian Stannard, I think, could win one of the classics, you know. And I know, he, I know, Pai Roubaix is one of his big goals. So, you know, why can't he be one of the big stars for a change as well? There are rumours of a cold section in the 2011 um, Tour de France. Yeah. Chris Froome's already said he's. Some, that's something that won't suit him yeah. as well. How much does a single section like that affect your planning for a Grand Tour? Um, yeah, it affects a lot actually. I mean, you've only got to have one stage with a few sections and you have to really think about your selections and um, 
you know, uh, uh, you, you've got to have some experience in the team of cobbles if if uh, they're in the stages. So I, I think we'll see next week, or this week actually, but we'll know next week more detail on it. Um, and I think, you know, Chris is right to say it's a bit of a concern for him. Um, you know, but quite a lot of the riders, GC guys like Quintana, that these guys will struggle even more than Chris, I think. Um, but it'd be interesting to see Nibbly how he would cope with it. But knowing him, he'll cope with it pretty well. But we, for sure, we, that will be one of our challenges, and that's what I like to work on a lot. Is you know, what's the challenges ahead of you, and that will be one of the challenges. So we'll, we'll look at equipment. We'll look at you know uh, the recons for that stage. There's no way Chris will ride that without ridden any cobbles in the season. Um, you know, so there'll be quite a lot of work goes into that one stage for sure. We hear a lot of riders um, saying that Paris Roubaix is the um, race that they would most like to win. Mm. Is that something you think I'm Paris Roubaix or the other um, classics which British riders could have a lot more impact on than they have so far? Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, you know, what Roger Hammond I think was third in in Roubaix a few years back, and Sean Yates fifth. You know, we've we've been there and thereabouts, um, but I think. You know, as I said, I think Ian Stannard has a great opportunity in, in Paru Bay. Um, I think Bradley Wiggins could win Paru Bay, which would be an interesting um, race. Um, but you know, there's, there's the Cobble Classics, but there's also the Ardennes Classics, and I think again, that's the step. Uh, so that's the step for Pete Kenner. I think you know, if he wants to win the World Championships, I think he needs to be very competitive in one of the Ardennes Classics, similar to what Mark was before he won the World Championships. We wanted him to win Milan San Remo first, you know. So I think we would like to see Pete in the next year or two performing in the hard ends as well. Do you ever look back at riders, British riders from the past, and think if they went into the GB team, yeah. the <coughs> professionalism that Sky have kind of developed, um, that they could have been so much better and achieved so much more than they did? Yeah, I think, I, you know. Uh, I always believe, as as British bike riders, that they, you know they've got um, a fantastic sort of depth to them, and um, to you know it's not like you, we're we're not brought up in that cycling world. So to do it, you've really got to want to do it. You know, you've got to commit a lot of time away from home. So when you're away from home, you know you're doing that for a reason, and, and it's not easy to do. So um, I think there's a lot of bike riders who have missed the boat, to be honest. Um, and you know, go back. I don't know any a year and you could think they could, with this structure that they have now, they could be so much better. Um, I mean, for me, recent, fairly recent, the guys in the 80s, like Chris Lillywhite, Chris Walker, there's a lot of guys like that who I think were so good. Um, and when I look back at taking on riders like Mark Cavendish at 18, and I look back at where they were at 18, 19 and 20, they were definitely as good as, as, as Mark and Ben Swifts and Ian Stannard. So, with this structure, they would definitely have made it through, yeah. With the success of Team GB, Sky, with riders like Cav, Froome and Wiggins, um, there seems to have been a whole renaissance of cycling, both recreational and as a kind of spectator sport. Yeah. Do you think that England, particularly with the Grand Depart in the UK this year, actually can start to become a sort of true cycling nation in a way many of the European countries are? I think it's hard to, you know, that, that takes a lot of history, I think, to, to get that depth of understanding in, 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 a, in a nation of a sport. Um, <coughs> excuse me, I think, um, I think we're getting there. I think there's a lot of interest now in the UK. Um, whether it will be like football, I don't know. Um, I'd like to think so, because I love the sport, but um, I'm not sure it will be like football, to be honest. But you know, you go to Italy and you go to France or Spain, and th there is a huge sort of interest, isn't there? You know, and you just feel the buzz when you're in them races. But you know, you go work on the Tour, tour of Britain, and I'm sure we'll see the Tour de France next year. You know, it was huge, and um, the Olympics last year was far bigger than I thought it would be. The Olympic road race in particular. So there's definitely a, a buzz around the country. If <coughs> Chris Froome stopped looking at his handlebars, yeah. um, tucked his elbows in and actually remembered to eat, mm. how much better could he be? 
I don't know. I mean, it, it's something which, you know, we've looked at quite a lot with Chris. Um, but everybody has their own individual style. And I, I went to listen to Michael Johnson talking a few years back. Um, and he changed his running style. He went from one coach to another. And he failed massively. And then he changed coach. And the coach said, just run how you want to run. And when, when he started to run how he originally ran, and that's his own style, he became what he became, you know. So I think if you try and change somebody drastically, you you, you perhaps stop them in their, their stride, you know. And Chris rides his bike how he rides his bike. Um, I think sometimes we would like him to put his head up a little bit more and see things. But it doesn't stop him, does it? You know, he's won the biggest bike race in the world. So fair play to him in, in the way he rides his bike.